I'm going to prepare the uh, financial statements for stock market second month of business. Income statement comes from your revenues minus your expenses. Statement of shareholders equity is going to summarize everything that happened to the owners uh, claims to the business. Then we do our statement of cash flows. Anytime you see the word cash that's going to go on your statement of cash flows and then we'll tally up our balances not forgetting that we have some beginning balances. So let's go through. It's for, again, this is for the month ended, June 30, for this month and this month only. So sales revenue, 3,000. So it's just like we did the first month, same steps. This is our subtotal gross profit. It's the markup on your, your socks or your goods. And they, that's the value they added. Wages, that's 400 right here depreciation so that's the service you got again we didn't pay that but that doesn't matter we got that service insurance um, expense represents how much insurance coverage we got this month and this month only and the depreciation is the amount of the uh, usefulness used of our equipment our non-current asset now operating income is your revenues and expenses up to this point but we're going to uh, start with our gross profit subtotal because we don't want to double count it and then interest expense is referred to as a non-operating expense. It's not part of your operations, but it is part of the calculation of net income. And this is my net income, $1,280. Now the next thing we're going to uh, do is our statement of shareholders equity. And we have to get our beginning um, stock. Now I am going to call this, I'm sorry, I'm going to now use just stock. It's interchangeable. So I'm going to go get my beginning stock, 2000. And we did not issue any stock this period, so I'm going to go equal zero. Now what I need to do is sum, even though there was zero, you want to always um, practice good spreadsheeting skills because maybe you'll go find, oh, find out whoops there was stock issued. Now I'm going to go get my beginning retained earnings that's your last period's ending retained earnings become this period's beginning retained earnings. I'm going to add our new uh, earnings which is our revenues and, and expenses from this period. I am going to subtract from that the dividends that were declared these, that's the earnings we didn't keep, if you will, or didn't retain. So here we go. Beginning retained earnings, 150 plus your new earnings, net income minus dividends equals 1,130. Now the next step is to get our total shareholders equity equals sum. Hold down your uh, control or command key and click on your stock and your retained earnings. That's your owner's total claims to the assets. All right, now for the statement of cash flows. Um, what I recommend is not starting here and working your way down. I would go to your journal and the first cash item I see is cash and it's paying for insurance. So I'm going to go find where that goes. It's right here, cash paid for insurance. So I'm going to go equal and go pick up that 300. And then I'm also going to notice here this next one is paying for, uh, for my accounts payable. What is that paying for? I look back up here. Oh, that's paying for my inventory. So my next one I'm going to get is my inventory. That was the next one right here. So that we did. And now I'm going to do this one, the paying your bills here. The next one um, that we have is uh, 2500 That's coming from our receivables. What are our receivables from? Oh, it's from our sales. We are getting cash from our customers. And that should be our largest cash inflow on a regular basis for a company. And then the last one here we're going to have is the paying of dividends. I just want to point it out just so we don't have to keep going back and forth. And so I'm going to go here and pay. Now we've got a lot of blanks here. Well, these are just subtotals. I'm going to sum up my operating activities, operating. I have zero investing, so I'm going to go equals zero. And my financing, and you should do some functions just in case you ended up adding 
another row, but anyways, it's 300. So our net change in cash, that is equal to, we're going to equal get our operating activities plus our investing plus our financing in that order. O-I-F, oh, if you'd remember those. So here we go. You go equal sum, hold down your control or command key, click on your operating, your investing, and your financing uh, subtotals. And our cash went up by 1300 Now what we have to do is add that change in cash to our beginning cash. I have to go get that up here. That was my beginning cash balance. So what's our ending cash balance? It's the sum of our change in cash plus our beginning cash. Now the balance sheet, this is at a point in time. I've got my cash, it's equal to 3,470. 3, you can link it to that or you can add the cash from your journal. I'm going to do that for this now. Accounts receivable. So I'm going to go equal sum. Then I'm going to go over to my journal and every time I see the word accounts receivable, I'm going to pick it up. I have to always look to make sure there's no beginning balances. There is no accounts receivable. Here's accounts receivable. So I'm going to hold my command or control key. Click on that 3000. And then I'm going to click on this minus 2500. And that's it for accounts receivable. I then hit enter. And it brings my balance of 500 that my customers that's the amount I have not yet collected from my customers. Inventory equals sum. You're going to have to be careful here. Again, hold down your controller command key. Don't forget your beginning balances. I started with 100. Inventory went up by 1,800 and went down by 1,200. That's it for inventory. Hit enter. Now prepaid equals sum. By the way, inventory is what you have left to sell for next period. Now, prepaid. I have started with 300 here, but we made an adjusting entry because we used 100 of it. So the $200 balance is the amount of insurance that I've paid for in advance that I haven't used yet. Current assets are the assets that are going to turn into cash or get used within the year. And now for equipment. Equal sum. Go to my journal. Now, I've got my beginning equipment. I'm also going to, now I'm going to hold down my uh, controller command key. I've used 15 up, so my uh, net equipment was um, 885. And then what happened? I don't see anything to equipment, but I do see accumulated depreciation. So those are what are going to get tallied so I can get my uh, amount of usefulness left of my equipment, which is. 870. Total assets is your current assets plus your non-current assets. 5,470. 740, excuse me. Counts payable equals sum. No beginning accounts payable. Hold down your control or command key. Counts payable went up went down. That's it for the accounts payable. That's how much I still owe my vendors, my suppliers. Equal sum. You should always equal sum. That way if there's more than one, there is only one account uh, wages payable, but it's just safer to do that. Then you don't have to go back and forth. Go to my notes payable. And it's my beginning balance. I did nothing to notes payable during the period. It's still 1000 interest payable equals sum. Got a beginning balance. That's the five dollars I owe for using the money in May and here's the uh, amount I owe for using the money in June. Ten dollars. Stock equals sum. Now actually we'll go, I'm going to do it this way. Equal, you go right up to your statement of shareholders equity because here it is. Now, I'm also going to call this stock. Again, common stock and stock are interchangeable. And I also have my ending uh, retained earnings right off my statement of shareholders equity right here. So that's, these two come from your statement of shareholders equity and this came from my statement of cash flows. And this is where I hope I did everything right. I go equal sum, tally up all my liabilities, which are all current liabilities and then your shareholders equity. 
and luckily it works. And that's how you do the statements. Don't forget your beginning balances.